Okay, last section. So, so two more formulas. I know you already have the quadratic formula, and you have to know that. Um, I'm hoping these are a little bit easier to remember. We have the distance formula and the midpoint formula. So I'm going to start with distance. Um, <clears throat> and here's the idea. So say we have a map, right? This is the xy plane, but it could represent a map. And you're, you have two locations. Let's say <clears throat> right here we have a point. We're at the location, say, negative 5, 2. And uh, <clears throat> we want to get, excuse me, we want to get to another point, say way over here. And let's say this is the point um, uh, 1210. Right. <clears throat> so x is 12, y is 10. Right. So, you know, one question you can ask is if we're at point A, and we want to get to point B, how far do we have to go? Right, so what's the distance between these two points? So I'll call that D for distance. OK, so one way to answer the question is to say, well, um, you know, how far do I have to travel if I go straight this way? And then. How far do I have to travel if I go straight up? That's not straight, of course. Uh, let me try that again. Let me just go straight down. All right, that's a little better. All right. So you can see what we have here is a right triangle. And so the horizontal distance, right, this, this distance, sorry, this distance here, uh, we'll just subtract the coordinates, right? So 12 minus negative 5, right, is really 12 plus 5, which is 17. Right? And then vertically, we're going from 2 to 10. So 10 minus 2 is 8, right? So this is just the hypotenuse. We used to call this C, right? This is A. Uh, B is 8. A is 17, B is 8, so what's C going to be, right? Well, um, it's Pythagorean theorem, right? So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. We did that a while ago. And since A is 17 and B is 8, just use your calculator. So 17, 17 squared is 289. And 8 squared is 64. So when you add those up, you get 353. So, right, so this is going to be 289 plus 64, which is 353. Right. Now, that's not the distance. right? That's the square of the distance. Remember, to get C, we use the square root method. right? So take the square root of 353. And you get, well, the square root of 353. Can we simplify that? Uh, as it turns out, no. This is a prime number, right? So, so that's sort of the best we can do here. It's the square root of 353 exactly. Oh, we can approximate, right? 353 and then hit the square root button. So it's about 18.8. Oops, sorry. So, yep, about 18.8. And I didn't give you units, right? I didn't say this is 17 miles, 8 miles, and this would be 18.8 miles, um, or kilometers, or feet, or whatever, right? It's just a distance, right? So we'll leave it as a number for now. Right. So you can do that. As it turns out, though, if you do this with generic points, if you just call this, say, x1 and y1, and at point b, we'll call this x2 and y2. So there's supposed to be twos here. And, right, so you apply the, the distance formula, uh, sorry, you apply the Pythagorean theorem, so d squared or c squared, either way. Uh, so our a here is just going to be the difference in the x's, x2 minus x1 squared, right, plus, and then do the same thing with the y's, right, y2 minus y1 squared. Uh, oh, 
I already took the square root, so it's all right. It's not c squared, that's c, and that's not d squared, that's just d. All right, so, all right, we'll, we'll leave this as, we'll leave this as d here. So this will be the distance, right? We don't need c anymore. That was for the Pythagorean theorem. So, right, so this is the distance formula, right? It just comes from the Pythagorean theorem, and, uh, and yeah. So, so yeah, ideally you should know this. Um, right? Whether you, you can figure it out from the Pythagorean theorem, like I did, or just, just remember this, right? Uh, yeah, don't get confused with slope, right? Slope is a number. We call it m for slope. But, and it still involves, you know, x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, but this is the, the ratio of the, of the dis, of differences. Right. So don't get confused with slope. A lot of people, when they're asked for distance, they find the slope. Um, this is something we haven't done in a while. It's chapter three, so, um, so, so yeah, it's we're not going to do slope here, right? So, so d for distance, m for slope. Right. So let, let's do this problem one more time, right? The question is just find the distance between. these two points. So point A will be negative 5, 2, and then point B will be 12, 10. So we take the distance, right? So use the distance formula. Again, I'm going to write it down, even though it's, it's right up here. And then we just plug in the numbers. Right, so what are the numbers? Well, now it doesn't matter which one you call 1 and 2. So I'm calling this point 1, so this will be x1, y1, and this will be x2, y2. But if you switch them, yeah, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Just be careful you don't say, you know, x1, x2, right? It's, it's x and y, okay? So Plugging in the numbers then, uh, y2 is 10, and y1 is 2. Oh, sorry, x, x2. x2 is 12, although that doesn't matter either. It doesn't matter which one. You can switch these and still get the right answer. Um, so there's a lot of forgiveness here. You can switch a lot of things, but, but not just everything, okay? So anyway, 12 minus negative 5 squared, and then we have y2 is 10 minus y1 is 2 squared. <clears throat> All right. So 12 minus negative 5 is 12 plus 5 is seven, 17, right? Don't forget we, have, we still have to square that. Plus, and then 10 minus 2 is 8, and then we have to square that. Well, 17 times 17, right? 289. And 8 times 8, 64. And then just add the 289 plus 64. That's the 353 that we got before, right? So same answer. This time we just use the distance formula. Yeah, so using the distance formula, um, we came up with the same answer. So, you know, you can also use the Pythagorean theorem. It's the same idea. Now, as a warning, you have to be careful here because a lot of students love to make this mistake. They split this up when you're not allowed to do that. And then they would get 17 plus 8, which would be 25. But that's not the distance, right? So, yeah, remember, we want to travel from point A to point B directly, right? So that distance is square root of 353, or it's about 18.8, right, approximately. So where's this 25 come from? Well, here's the distance of 25. If you travel from point A first to over here, and then you make a left turn, and then you go this way, then you went 17 plus 8, right? And you went 25 units, 25, a distance of 25, let's say 25 miles, right? 
but we don't want to go this way than this way, right? We want to take the shortcut, right? We want to go directly from point A to point B. Make sense? So yes, so yes, so don't do that, right? Don't split up the square root. Um, I, I warned you about this many times before, but it bears repeating. The square root of a plus b is not the square root of a plus the square root of b. It doesn't work that way. Same thing if you were subtracting, right? You cannot split that up. You can only do it when you're multiplying or dividing, right? So you can do square root of a times b equals square root of a times square root of b. As long as they're not both negative, it, it works. Okay, um, let's do another one. Okay, so here's the question. Find the exact distance between these two points, negative 12, negative 23, and 4, negative 8. Okay, so for the distance, we need the distance formula. Here it is again. I'm going to need a longer square root here, right? So square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Right. So plug in the numbers. Now, which one you call 1 and 2 doesn't matter. Since this is the first point, let's call this x1, y1. And this will be x2, y2. If it helps, you can actually write out what these numbers are. So x1 is negative 12, right? y1 is negative 23, uh, x2 is positive 4, and sorry, y2 is negative 8. Right. So yeah, so you can do that, or just recognize that this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2, right? Either way. All right, so now just plug in the numbers, right? x2 was negative 23 minus x1, which is negative 12. Again, you have a, a negative minus a negative. And I need more space here. So plus y2 is negative 8. Oh, hang on. I completely messed that up. Let's start over. What, what's x2 here? x2 is 4. I don't know where I got negative 23 from, right? So x2 is 4. I'm going too fast, right? Okay. Minus x1. There's x1, right? So x2 minus x1, 4 minus negative 12. All right. Plus, and now y2, that's the negative 8. So maybe there's y2. And y1 is negative 23. So y2, negative 8, minus y1, negative 23. So, yeah, kind of a nuisance when you have a lot of negative signs here, but you, in some problems that's going to happen, right? So 4 minus negative 12 is really, let's do it this way, 4 plus 12, right? And then negative 8 minus 23 is negative 8 plus 23. So, yeah, you can do that in your head, right? 4 plus 12 is 16, so 16 squared. And 23 minus 8 is 15, positive 15, right? So 15 squared, right? So, again, don't make the mistake of doing 16 plus 15. That's not it. 16 squared, 16 times 16 is 256, and 15 times 15 is 225. So... Yep, when you add those, let's see, you get 1, 8, and then 4. 481. Square root of 481. Okay, so you can use your calculator. This is approximately 21.93. Um, let me double check that. 481. Yep, 21.93, good enough. And can we simplify 481, or is that another prime number? So, all right, so <clears throat> let's see. We have 481. So I tried dividing by 3, 7, 11 doesn't work, 13 works. So 13 times 37. But these are both prime numbers, so there's no perfect squares here. So 
again, you cannot simplify this. This is as simple as it gets. Uh, but when you can simplify, you should simplify, right? So don't forget to simplify if necessary, at least in, in, a, in the previous two problems, the square root of 353, square root of 41, that's as good as it gets, right? So, yeah. Right, so that's the answer, just, just that number. Um, yeah, let's do one more. Oh, before we do that, I just want to mention in the directions, notice that it says find the exact distance. So the exact distance is this number here, right? The square root of 481. Um, the 21.93 is approximate. So they didn't ask for that, um, but it doesn't hurt to do both. Um, but in this problem, all they wanted was the exact, right? So, so that should have been your answer here. Um, yeah, right. So the, so the exact distance is the square root of 481, and you can leave it at that. Okay, so now on to the next problem, which is down here. Find the exact, again, keyword, exact distance between negative 518 and 0, 06. So, yeah, so once again, we need the distance formula. And again, you know me, I like to write it down every time. So square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared all under the square root. So once again, we'll label this as x1 and then y1, and then this will be x2 and y2. Right. So I think I confused myself last time. I'm just going to leave it like this. So x2 is definitely 0, and x1 is definitely negative 5. Right. y2 is 6 and y1 is 18. So this is 0 plus 5, which is 5 squared. And then 6 minus 18 is negative uh, 12 squared. Right? And 5 squared, 5 times 5 is 25. And negative 12 times negative 12 is positive 144. Again, be careful that the negative is on the inside. Right? You're never going to be subtracting here. Right. In fact, if you make the mistake of subtracting, uh, be careful because you'll, you'll end up with an imaginary number here, right? 25 minus 144 is negative, and the square root of a negative number is imaginary. And so when you have two points and you say, well, what's the distance between them? And you answer, oh, that's imaginary, then that doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> you have two actual points, right? actual points in existence, there's always a distance between them. You can't say that distance is imaginary, right? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, right. So, right, uh, it's not 5 plus 12, right? You got to do 25 plus 144, which is 169. And can we simplify that? Actually, yeah. 169 is 13 times 13. It's a perfect square. So the square root of 169 is exactly 13, right? There's no, no approximating here. This is exact, right? So, yep, so in this case, the, the, the exact wasn't even necessary here because we didn't, you know, we didn't end up with, you know, square root of 5, which we can't simplify any further. Uh, we get 13, and you can check that that's right. Um, yeah, so sometimes you do get a nice number, right? You don't always get these weird square roots, um, but uh, again, that's, that's because this is, well, right, it turns out this is what's called a Pythagorean triangle, right? You have 5, 12, 13, where the hypotenuse turns out to be a whole number. And that doesn't always happen, of course. It didn't happen in the previous two problems. But it could happen, right? So... So I think I, I hope this is enough for the distance. Uh, that's how to find the distance between two points. Okay, one last thing, right? The midpoint formula, right? So now we want to figure out the midpoint between two points. So the midpoint, is, first of all, it's a point, so it's not a single number like distance. It's two numbers, right? So 
we're at point A and we want to get to point B. But before we can get there, we have to get halfway there. Right? So right around here is the halfway point. Oh, yeah, I had it pretty close, but say right around here. Right? So we'll call that point M. Actually, we shouldn't use M. So how about MP for midpoint? Right? So this is going to have, because it's a point, it has two coordinates, right? It'll have XM and YM. Okay, so how do we find XM and YM? So that's the midpoint formula, and here it is, right? So XM, you just take X1 plus X2, right? So you're not subtracting here, you're adding, and then just divide by 2, cut it in half. And you do the same thing for the Ys, right? Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2, right? And then you just form the point, right, XM, YM. I mean, you could write it as a single point, too. It's a little clumsy this way, but it works, right? x1 plus x2 over 2, and then y1 plus y2 over 2. So if you want to, want to write it all at once as being the midpoint, oops, I was saying point, ym. Yep, so same thing. Right. So that's how to find the midpoint, right? You just... Uh, Add up the coordinates and then divide by 2. So let's do an example. Um, so we'll find the midpoint. Between, say, negative 5, 2, and 12, 10. Okay, so this looks familiar, right? We already found the distance between these two points. This, I think, was the first example we did. Um, oh, so, yeah. So we'll call this example four in this video. Um, I think we did three others, right? Yeah. So, okay, so now we want the midpoint, not the distance, right? So, yeah, be careful because uh, if you use M for midpoint, you might get confused with slope. Again, we don't want the slope here, so don't do this. Right? That's a completely separate question. We want to use this formula here, right? So MP for midpoint, if you, if you want to abbreviate, maybe MP. In fact, I'm not going to abbreviate. I'll just spell it out, right? We're looking for the midpoint. So, right, here's the formula. X1 plus X2, sorry, divided by 2. And then the second coordinate is y1 plus y2, all divided by 2. All right, well, we know what x1 is. So x1 is negative 5, y1 is 2, x2 is 10, and what? No, x2 is 12. Sorry, y2 is 10. Okay, I must be getting tired. Uh, it's okay, so x1 plus x2 is negative 5 plus 12, and don't forget to divide by 2. And then y1 plus y2 is 2 plus 10, all divided by 2, right? And the rest is just simplifying. Uh, 12 minus 5 is 7, so this is 7 over 2. Uh, 2 plus 10 is 12, so 12 over 2. Well, 7 over 2, you, if you want to write as 3.5 or 3.5, you can. I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction. But 12 divided by 2 is just 6, so we should simplify that. So there's your midpoint, right? 7 over 2, 6. And, you know, just in case, if you want to write it as 3.5, that's okay too. You know I'm not picky about that. So, all right. So that's, that's finding the midpoint, right? Let's do another one. Right. Okay. Find the midpoint between negative 12, negative 23, and 4, negative 8. Again, we did the distance for these two points, but now we need the midpoint, right? So yeah, separate question to find the midpoint. Well, here it is, right? Oh, before I do the formula again, um, let's label this. This is x1. This is y1. 
and we'll label this as x2, y2. Same numbers when we did the distance, right? Now, for the midpoint, yep. So x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So again, I like to do it all at once. If you want to write them separately, right, as your xm and then ym, that's fine too. All right, x1 is negative 12, and x2 is 4. So add those up, divide by 2. y1 is negative 23, and y2 is negative 8. So negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8, divided by 2. Negative 23 plus negative 8, I think, is negative 31, divided by 2. So this time we can simplify the first one. Negative 8 divided by 2 is just negative 4. But the negative 31 over 2, I guess we'll just leave as negative 31 over 2. At least I would, I would do that. Um, on the other hand, if you want to write, the, if you divide, you get negative 15.5, negative 15 and a half. So I'm okay with that as well. That's a comma here, right? So either way, either way is fine. All right, let's do one more. Okay, again, find the midpoint between these two points. So the two points here, my x1 is 2 thirds, my y1 is 1 fifth, my x2 is negative 5 6, and my y2 is 3 tenths. Um, yep, they could be fractions. They they can be fractions, um, not likely. So this, this I would consider this to be a difficult one. Um, so you're not likely to see this, but you never know. It, it, it could turn up in the homework. I think there might be one or two of these in the homework. So just to prepare you for the worst, let's do one with fractions. Okay, so to do this, again, we need the midpoint. And so remember it's x1 plus x2 over 2, and then y1 plus y2 over 2. All right. So, yeah, here's, here's the issue. And, in fact, it might be more helpful in this case, uh, because these are fractions, to think of it like this. You could do 1 half times x1 plus x2, and then 1 half times y1 plus y2. You don't have to do it that way, but... Um, I think this might be easier, right? So now we have to add x1, which is 2 thirds, plus x2, which is, oh boy, negative 5 over 6. So we're actually going to subtract 2 over 3 minus 5 over 6, right? And then 1 half times y1, which is 1 fifth, plus y2, which is 3 tenths. Yeah, kind of a mess, right? So I'm going to leave the 1 half. But now we have to add, or we have to subtract rather, 2 thirds minus 5 over 6. Right, so how do we subtract fractions? All right, we did that in chapter 7. Yep, common denominator. In this case, it's going to be 6. So how do I get the 3 to be a 6? I multiply top and bottom by 2. And when I do that, Right, I still have the 1 half. That'll come later. I get 4 over 6 minus 5 over 6. Right. And then we'll do the y's later. Let's finish this. Let's finish the x's here. Right. It's supposed to be an equals. So we're going to have 1 half times, well, 4 minus 5 is just negative 1 over 6. Right. And now multiplying, 1 times negative 1 is just negative 1. Right? And then 2 times 6 is 12. So the x-coordinate is negative 1 12. Make sense? All right, now let's go back and do the y's. All right? So we have the 1 half in front. Uh, we have 1 over 5 plus 3 over 10. And that's a 5, right? So what's our LCD here? What's our least common denominator? Right, the 10, right? Because I can do 5 times 2 to get 10. 
So, yep, for the first fraction, we're, again, going to multiply by 2 over 2. Um, that's, that's a coincidence that it's the same 2 here, but, you know, sometimes that happens. All right, so this is 2 over 10 plus 3 over 10. Well, 2 over 10 plus 3 over 10 is, we'll do this here, this is 5 over 10. But 5 over 10 reduces to its lowest terms. Cancel the 5s, you get 1 half. Oops, sorry, 1 over 2, 1 half. Right? So this is 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 over 4. And there you go. Right? There's, there's our final answer. I would say there's no reason to convert these to decimals. Um, Obviously, if, if you insist, um, well, this is going to be negative 0 0.083333, so 3 repeating, and then 1 fourth, well, that's just going to be 0 0.25. Yeah, not, not as nice. I, I, I mean, acceptable, but trust me, you don't want to do this, especially in Connect Math, where you're not going to be able to write the, the little bar here indicating that the 3 repeats. Um, so, no, I would much prefer, much prefer you write it as fractions on the left here. Okay. So, yeah, so that's how this works when you have fractions. You have to know how to add and subtract fractions, uh, even with different denominators. So this is a good review of, you know, 7.4, um, although in 7.4 we did ones much harder than these. Uh, so you can look back and, and review those. But uh, yeah, for this, for this uh, I should say for this test, you don't, right, you're probably not going to need this here. So what do you need for, for test four? Maybe this is a good time to just uh, evaluate. So test four covers quite a lot, everything in chapter 10, so 10.1 to 10.8, so, you know, remember these are square roots, cube roots, you know, rational exponents, so, you know, can you convert the cube root of x squared to an exponent, right, so it's x to the 2 over 3, so all of that was chapter 10, right, and adding and subtracting square roots, multiplying and dividing square roots, all that stuff, um, you know, should be should be familiar, right? Um, and then in we just did chapter eleven, eleven point one. These were quadratic equations. And you have to know how to solve a quadratic equation. Actually, let's combine them both. Eleven one, eleven two, right? There's four ways of solving a quadratic equation. You should know factoring. Of course, that was way back in chapter six, I believe, six point seven. So we probably won't even ask you problems where you can factor, but it is, it is a method of solving quadratic equations, right? Um, there's also the square root method, so make sure you know that. Square root method, yep. And then we come to completing the square. Now, I know we did at least three examples of that, um, completing the, sorry, completing the square, yep. Um, and I think I already told you that on, on this test, there's only going to be one question, right? I mean, maybe two, but that's a big maybe. I'm more likely just to ask one completing the square question. Um, I mean, look, it could be two because it's going to be slightly longer test than usual, but, um, so it's either one or two, right? And if, it, if there's two, then one will be a lot easier than the other. Let's put it that way. Um, so you do have to know how, how to complete the square. Um, and then there's the quadratic formula, which you should also know. Okay. So, yep, quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And, of course, you should know the distance formula as well. This is what we just did here, 
Know the distance formula. Know the midpoint formula. Right. So distance is d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Oops, that's in parentheses. Yep, all under the square root. And then midpoint, I'm going to abbreviate, x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. So I would say that, at least for test 4, these three formulas here you should know. No. And, and they could turn up on the final too, so you'll have to know these for the final exam as well. Okay. Um, all right, so that should take care of everything from, oh, yes, yeah, so I forgot. So everything in Chapter 10, 10.1 10 through 10.8, not everything in Chapter 11, right? Only 11.1 11, and 11.2, so we skipped a couple more sections there. And then the, the only section in Chapter 13 is 13.1, and it's not the whole section. So... Right, 13.1 covers a lot of other stuff like circles and things like that. You don't have to know circles. All you need from 13.1 is distance and midpoint. And how to use these formulas to calculate the distance and midpoint, right, like we did up here, right? So, so that's test four. I hope that helps. Uh, best of luck.